Hi, I'm Chris Cast, and I'm here with Mark Coots. He's the CEO of Teva Corporation in Benton, Missouri. Today we're going to talk about post-harvest residue recovery. Mark? Yeah, there's been a lot of issues with uh, the um, crop residue that we've got out there nowadays. You know, we're producing more corn, so there's a lot of uh, stalks out there and things. And the nice thing is, is there are nutrients in that for us to be able to use up and to uh, add back to the soil. You know, in, in some places here in the south to deal with it, you know, we've started actually burning the, the crop residue off, which I, I hate to see, you know, because there are good things in that to, to still reclaim, you know. So, um, you know, but uh, for instance, you know, just in the stalks, if you've got 150 bushel corn, just what you have left in the stalks, you've got about, a, this is just approximate numbers, but you've got about 100 pounds of nitrogen, about 37 pounds of phosphate, 145 pounds of potash, and about 26 pounds of calcium, you know, left in those stalks. And so if we can capture that, you know, that's a lot of good fertilizer that you've already put money into that you can capture back for your crop then. Definitely. Well, Mark, how do we go about reclaiming some of those nutrients, getting those back to the soil? Well, the, uh, there's a couple of ways of doing those things that, that we look at, you know, here at Teva. You know, the, uh, what, it, what it takes is when those things start to break down, you're going to have to have biological life and, and things like that. And remember, everything, uh, humus, we want it to break down to humus, which is basically, you know, your dirt and stuff. And um, humus is a 12 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. So when you're looking at corn, Corn's about uh, 40 to 45 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. So, you know, to help speed that decomposition up, you can look at adding a little bit of nitrogen with it, maybe, you know, four or five gallons of 28% or 32%. Or if you're needing some sulfur to get out there to maybe reduce some of your heavy metals in the soil and things along, but also get some nitrogen in that, you could look at uh, ammonium thiosulfate 120026 and maybe four to five gallons of that per acre. Uh, then we also like to add with that a product called, uh, you know, any kind of biological, but the one that we recommend is one that's called Stub Down, and um, it just helps that decomposition. It's got certain bacteria in it that will help that decomposition in the soil. And then we're always, anytime we use a biological, uh, we always add a food source with it. So we'll be, you know, we always adding our sugar, the MMTS sugar with it and things. but. If you want more information about biologicals and things like that and the sugars, we're going to do videos on those and you guys can, you know, check out the videos on the biological and the sugar will go more in depth on, you know, what they do in the soil and how they work and things like that, you know. But that just helps the decomposition to have those there and then we can try to save maybe 70, 80 percent of those nutrients and so that's, that's fertilizer that you don't have to go to town and buy. You've already grown that yourself. It's like... A uh, green manure crop only it's you know you've grown it and it's it's not green anymore obviously you know it's it's after harvest so well mark you talked about corn uh what about other crops corn uh besides corn beans wheat rice and how do you incorporate that in to to make sure with a tillage practice that you're getting the biggest bang for your buck yeah yeah there's other crops also going to have nutrients in them too the you know it's obviously going to be less because you don't have near the tonnage of of you know residue out there and everything but possibly in soybeans you're going to have around 60 pounds of potash approximately you know maybe 20 pounds of phosphate so you're not going to have as much but it's still valuable nutrients there to it and and like i was talking about that carbon to nitrogen ratio you know beans are only about a 30 35 to one so they'll break down much faster that's why you don't see you know that residue lasting as long as you do the others now Wheat and rice and cotton, you know, those are, have a very high carbon to nitrogen ratio. That's why it takes so long for us to, to break those uh, residues down. Um, but that's, you know, it's still important things that we're adding humus back to the soil if we break those down versus burning them off and, and things like that, you know. So, uh, you know, those other crops definitely have value, you know, you know in this talk of crop residues. So. And what do you think is the best type of tillage to, to incorporate that in? Yeah, the tillage thing is a, is a good question because, you know, there's so many different ways of, of doing things out there. You know, uh, you're obviously going to get faster decomposition if you get it worked into the soil because you got soil bacteria and you're, they're, the residue's more covered by that, you know. So if they can incorporate it, that's great. Not everybody can do that. If you're no-till or you're minimum-till or whatever you may be, you're highly erodible ground, you know, whatever that may be, 
you know, it's still a good idea to do those practices with the nitrogen, with the biologicals and sugars to speed things up. It's just going to do much faster, you know, if you've got some tillage with it. So, uh, you know, another thing is, you know, we're lucky we're here, you know, I call us south, you know, uh, in southeast Missouri. We're definitely going to get more decomposition than the guys up north, you know, because our soil temperatures are going to stay warmer longer. And so we're going to get better decomposition in the, in the scheme of things, you know, just out of sheer, we're going to stay warmer than, than you guys up north, you know, the guys up north are going to. So, Okay. Thank you, Mark. Yep.